grace, mercy, and peace. These are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What does it mean to be lost when it comes to saving faith in Jesus Christ? I think this is the question that our text today would lead us to ask ourselves. When we hear about the Good Shepherd seeking the lost, who do we think of? Perhaps we have somebody in mind that we think is especially lost. Somebody perhaps who hasn't been to church in a while, somebody who has even gone so far as to have announced that they have forsaken the faith, they have renounced the faith that they once had in Christ. Somebody who grew up in the church, but upon the influences of the world, they have decided that the church is just not for them. Perhaps we have a picture of that person in our mind as the lost sheep, the one who Jesus is referring to in his parable today. But what if, what if that lost sheep is sitting in your pew? What if that lost sheep is in fact you? Nonsense, Pastor, you might say. We're right here. We're here. We're here on Christian Education Sunday. We are here. We brought our kids to Sunday school. We are here. We are not lost. And I would say to you, well, then how sad that is for you. How sad for you to be among the 99 who need no shepherd, who need no savior. How sad for you to think yourselves as unlost because our savior has great blessings in store for those who are lost. As I was preparing my sermon this week, I was reminded that this sermon, this same text, I preached on three years ago. Now, I can count on one hand the times that my sermon has, has, has garnered a response outside of Sunday morning. Usually, on Sunday morning, people will shake my hand and say, Good sermon, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Say something nice. But there's only been a small handful of times that somebody had said, Pastor, can I talk to you after the service, after the sermon? And they specifically wanted to talk to me about something I said in my sermon. Now, I don't remember exactly what I said three years ago, but I do remember the response. I had a member that had come to my office. It must have been about this same time of year because, like some of you, the summer had gone by, and they hadn't been to church in a while. And then after Labor Day, they are back in church. And they said, you were talking about this lost sheep. Were you talking about me? And I said, quite honestly, yes. But not just you. I was talking about many people who have been lost. And certainly... I was talking about you, and I'm glad you heard that, and I hope that you heard the blessing that our Lord Jesus has for you, who once were lost, but now are found. And this person was not relieved, not comforted, not overjoyed by the fact that she had been found by Christ, but rather she continued to be angry with him. Who are you? calling lost, she asked. Who are you to call me lost? You don't know that I read my Bible every day. You don't know that I've done my own daily devotions. You don't know that I pray. I'm not lost. Even though this person hadn't been to church for over a year, she was quite upset that I had the nerve to call her lost. Well, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to hear me clearly that when I call you lost sheep, I am calling all members of this church lost sheep. 
And when I call all members of this church lost sheep, I myself am a member of this church. Yes, you might think, Pastor, how can he be lost? He is the pastor. He's the one who dedicates his life to the study of Scripture and the proclamation of the Word of God. How can he be lost? Who are you calling lost? But when I said, picture somebody who is lost, picture this lost sheep, did you picture yourself? Because in our catechism, we confess that we are lost. In the second article of the Apostles' Creed, we confess that I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. I am reminded of the movie The Sixth Sense. Now, I often associate things with movies that I think are popular in the mainstream, and often I am surprised with the movies that many of you have not seen. So I'll explain The Sixth Sense to you just very briefly. In The Sixth Sense, there is a young boy whose name escapes me right now, but this young boy has this supernatural, this, uh, un, this abnormal ability to see dead people. And this is what he says to his doctor, uh, the, his psychologist, the person that is caring for him, played by, the care, played by Bruce Willis. He says to him, I see dead people. I see them everywhere I look. Some of them don't even know they're dead. And then I'll let you watch the movie to see how things turn out. But that is what life often is like for me as a pastor. Often, I see lost people. I see lost people everywhere I look, and some don't even know that they are lost. Some think that they are among the 99 doing just fine. Some don't realize that they are in their own way lost. And some rebel against being lost. They say, who are you to call me lost? Who are you calling lost? Don't you dare refer to me in such a way. And dear brothers and sisters of Christ, my exhortation to you today is that we be thankful that we are counted among the lost. Because if we are counted among the lost, then we are counted among those that Jesus has sought and that Jesus has rescued. If we are among the lost, then we are among the sinners whom Jesus doth receive, as we just sang. As lost and condemned people, we have been redeemed by our Lord Jesus Christ. As lost and condemned people, we have been rescued and purchased by our Lord Jesus Christ, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Christ Jesus came to redeem sinners, Paul says, of whom I am the foremost. Paul? Paul can say that he is the foremost of sinners? Paul, who was one of the greatest evangelists, the greatest spreaders of the gospel, the greatest missionaries in the world's history, counts himself as one of the most lost sinners of all time. Well, why? So that he can rejoice in the great blessing of the forgiveness of sins, the great blessing of the gospel, the great blessing of salvation that is his in Jesus Christ and him alone. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he was talking to people that the good people thought had no business talking to Jesus. Jesus was eating 
with tax collectors and sinners. And when the Pharisees complained, why are you doing this, Jesus? Why are you lowering yourself to eat with such lost people? Jesus responded, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And this is where Jesus finds his joy. We shouldn't go out of our way to be lost, mind you. We don't need to. We shouldn't go out of our way to say, well, you know, if Jesus likes the lost, then maybe I should stop going to church for several months so that in several months I can be found again. No, we don't need to go out of our way to be lost. We are plenty lost by ourselves. We are plenty lost in what we, what we think, what we say, and what we do. We are plenty lost when we confess that we have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. But when we confess our sins, when we confess that we are indeed lost, Jesus finds us. Yes, Jesus, our good shepherd, takes joy in finding us. Jesus says there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 who need no repentance. Jesus takes joy in you because you once were lost but now are found. You, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are not of the 99. You are the one whom Jesus has sought and saved. Now it is interesting to me in the parables that Jesus gives us today, he talks about sheep and he talks about coins. And when the lost sheep is found, who is it that rejoices? It's not their fellow sheep. Their fellow sheep probably didn't even miss them. It's not even the coins. The coins have no, no business rejoicing. They're coins. They can't show emotion. But who is it that rejoices? It is heaven. With angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, our Lord rejoices over you. Yes, that is your, that is your value. That is where you find your self-worth. Because God has seen fit to rescue you, a lost and condemned person. He has seen fit to purchase you with the blood of his own son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood, who died for you. That is your value. That is your work. You, as a lost sheep, have been claimed by our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, have been found by him, have been claimed by him, and have been rejoiced over by him and all the company in heaven. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow lost sheep, take joy. Take joy that you have been found by our good shepherd. Take joy that he values you so much that he would leave the 99 to find you. And then, picture those people that you pictured at the beginning of the sermon. Those people who are also lost. Picture them not as the one versus us, the 99, but picture them as fellow lost sinners who need desperately to hear the salvation that is theirs in Jesus Christ. And then invite them. Say, come with me. Come. Come to the church that is full of lost sheep just like you. Because here we will take refuge in our Lord who saves us, our Lord who feeds us, our Lord who provides for us, and our Lord who blesses us. He is our good shepherd, and he will rejoice over you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts 
and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs>